Swim Things in Blue Springs, your one-stop shop for all things swim. Pools, spas, patio furniture, swimwear, and accessories. Visit them in Blue Springs or at www.swimthings.com. But that's what got me into it. I just forgot all about the law after that. It just seemed too much. There's too much reward for me personally, seeing kids grow after it, it, I mean, through the goal setting process and, and seeing them figure out, Oh, this is my roadmap. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. You know, and, um, it just, it just became something of a, a passion like it does for all of us, as you know, right. so that was, that was really it. That was how I got pulled in. I mean, that's a great story going from, you know, not even (laughs) wanting to like thinking about this, like even coaching and then just walking into practice and like, just, all right, we're doing this. And then kind of going from there. Um, I feel like once you get into the coaching world or you get into the coaching aspect, it sucks you in (laughs) and you're sucked in and you want to stay because it's so again, it's a rewarding factor. You get to see these, you know, student athletes or these kids, you know, grow. And, um, you know, it's probably one of the most rewarding things because you get to do it with them. You're a part of it. And so, um, I completely agree with you on that. That's so awesome. So I guess, tell me when was the turning point when you got into high school coaching? Okay. So I was club coaching and, um, I had a chance to be a head coach uh, at a place called Sarasota, Florida. I went down there to coach and um, very good club, uh, small, but uh, a good club. I followed a, a phenomenal coach named Tim Blood and a uh, tough act to follow. We did increase the size of the team, but I had greatest, unbelievable assistants. Frankly, my assistants were far better than me. I learned way more from them. I could ever teach them, uh, which I always felt that. Then I was Greg Goodman or Jeff Doris or, or anybody. Uh, but, but I really, um, I, I got a lot of experience, but I realized that really wasn't where I wanted to be. And uh, once again, um, also thinking, you know, cause there's people in my family that were, you know, Oh, you don't want to keep doing this stuff and look at, you know, you just never know. And there's no security and all that. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I was casting about my granddad was trying to get me to go out and, and I had, tentatively agreed to go out and interview with a friend of his who ran a bank out in the suburbs in Vegas. And, you know, of course he's pitching this, we're going to boom, this is going to be one of the great boom towns and you got to get in here young and buddy, you're going to end up being a vice president for me. And so the phone interview went well and we tentatively set up an interview and I went fishing with some buddies up in uh, Northern Minnesota, came back and my parents, as soon as I got back into town, my parents said, some guy named Roscoe Ryder in Blue Springs, Missouri, wants to talk to you. He said he got your name from the Millers. Well, the Millers were swimmers from Blue Springs who swam all the way over the other side of the town for Blazers way back. And they happened to be the first family to join after I began coaching for Coach Milwaukee and the Blazers. Nice. So I said, Sure. I mean, if the Millers want me to talk to Roscoe, I'll talk to him. So I talked to him. He said, Hey, we got this job. We got this thing. Would you please at least just look at it? So I went down and looked at it and uh, I just thought it was great. I, I just liked the really the people's attitude more than anything. And uh, they hastily organized an interview. And I did the interview and I just especially loved a gentleman named uh, Gail Bartow, Gene Bartow, UCLA basketball coach, national championship coach, his brother. And he was our superintendent. Wow. 
And he was uh, a big influence on me on how to handle um, parents. And he asked me one question and it was, could you go back? Could you go back to the job you just had if you wanted to? And I said, yeah, but why would anybody go backwards? He just turned around to Charlie McGraw, who became his successor. It was the HR, whose daughter became a Relay All-American for me. He goes, hire him. Just call the city and tell him it's done. And got up and left. Coach, look forward to meeting you. Look forward to spending time with you. That's <laughs> and awesome. he was at he was at every meet the first year. He was, I mean, all the support you could want. I mean, it was just a, it was a unique place back then. And and um, and back when it was so much smaller, it was one school. Right. So that just that got me pulled in. And then of course they said, well. You better do something about getting a feeder program started because you can't live in the hallway. <laughs> That's what I did the first year. I just, I just go in the hallway. Hey, come here. You tall, skinny guy. Play basketball? No, I need to talk to you. <laughs> That's what I did. <laughs> you, you tall, skinny girl. Come here. What do you do? Well, I used to play soccer, but what do you do now? Oh, I don't do anything. All right. You're going to swim. You know I mean? That's all I did. I just, I just lived in the hallway. And just recruited. So then the next summer, I started a summer team. And then we started doing uh, kind of a very loose, uh, very, really, it was just three days a week kind of club thing. Mm -hmm. And um, by midwinter, we had kids who wanted to do a little bit more. And then they wanted the winter, not just the fall. And then they wanted spring. And by that time, Coach Malone said, Bill, you might want to come up with a plan on this. And that you're kind of winging it here, Bubba. So, so um, the more I looked at it and kind of laid out plus and minuses, it really helped us to be uh, a branch of the Blazers when I was taken up with high school or something to do with the district, you know, I still had coaches that could mm -hmm. take the kids and go to meets and then I could join them as soon as I could get there. So we ended up doing that and things just kind of grew from there and, um, I, I just, I got very lucky. Like I said, I just stumbled into Greg Goodman. I was literally over at the pool my first year at, at the end of the first season. And this guy comes walking in athletic looking dude and, um, says, Hey, um, I'd like to know what I have to do to get access to the pool. I, I kind of screwed up. I applied for that Ironman thing and I got in, I didn't think I'd get in, but I got in. So I've been riding a little bike and run a little bit, but uh, I'm pretty good swimmer, but I need to swim. So I, I said, well, sure. Hop in, show me how you swim. He got in, took about 150 strokes, got almost to halfway and threw up in the gutter once. And I said, you know what? We can, we can help you a lot. So you don't drown. And I'll tell you what, I'll give you keys to this place. If you're coach with me, He's just like, <laughs> Oh, you're going to pay me and give me full time. Yeah. I'll do it. So I ended up, that's how I ended up with the best diving coach uh, in the state of Missouri. And uh, awesome. then I just had a succession of people. I just got very lucky on somehow there always seemed to be a young person changing careers and going into teaching who also wanted to coach. And sometimes they hadn't been swimmers either, but Sometimes they had, and, and we just got them. It doesn't matter if it was Ann Penland or Jeff Doris or anyone. We just ended up with a series of, of very, very good people. And, and so things kind of grew. And, and, uh, and I was, I was, um, had a head of steam up at that age in the 20s. So um, I was, it was a very different world. The suburban conference you knew and swam in didn't mm -hmm. exist. Yeah. Um, coaches would openly talk about, boy, if I could just get two or three more stud girls who could go 29 and in the 50, two or three more boys who are studs who go 25 and the 50. And, and I'm just sitting there listening to this going, what am I, what am I into here? What am I going to do? <laughs> and so it was, it, it was really, um, it was really an education all the way around. And so that's what started me thinking about, well, we better, better form the coaches association. We better start educating people. We're start bringing in the Eddie Reese's and, and bring in these people who can talk to us uh, about how our sport developed and how our technique should be and training and physiology. And so 
Um, I started kind of doing that with great guys like Jim Whitelaw, uh, Missouri Hall of Fame coach, and uh, Dan Hendricks, and oh, uh, Jim Azier from Raytown, very supportive guy, um, also a character, uh, but a great guy. And uh, and we so we started getting that going too, and and just you know things kind of have a way of, I guess, self fulfilling prophecy. And the more I talked about, you know, no, we're going to compete with St. Louis. We, when Blue Springs is going, we're going to win this thing. I don't care how. And I got an unusual group of girls that had all been eight and unders for me and come up through the ranks and uh, pulled a few more out of the hallway that turned out to have some really good ability. And it just kind of grew. And one day we woke up and ate up 128 point lead on Parkway West. Uh, and there's six national team girls. And because uh, that's really all they had. And mm -hmm. We won the first time and then it kind of became this thing where, oh God, now I got to feed this monster I created. And so you just start looking at more and more different ways to do things and, and keep the kids interested and, and fired up. But uh, the high school kind of took over a little bit and some of that was because that's kind of what the district wanted. But mm -hmm. it, was, it was more loose back then because I, I had no problems. I would just do the little kids in the winter because I wanted their technique to be right summer I could work with the older kids and the younger kids too mm -hmm. and uh, I took coaching the coaches and summer team very seriously I didn't I didn't just throw a card at, at, at college kids I, I we gave them clinics and showed them the drills that we expected them to use with okay. different ages and and explained to them there's some things that you can correct in a stroke drill at sub speed and there's some things that they need to be at speed at to correct and we talked mm -hmm. about those things and Try to keep it as simple as I could, but um, but anyway, that, that's kind of how the whole thing just snowballed. It, it, I was not ever in it at first to win. Everybody asked me our goal. I said, "Well, I want to produce great citizens," and I said, "I think if I do that, then the rest will take care of itself." Yep. And then the, the goal was never to win it. Really, I mean, in the back of your mind, you know you're capable, and and the kids know it, but. Um, it was just a really good breakthrough group. I mean, we had four all Americans on that group and, and uh, you know, a top 10 breaststroker and that having that kind of a breaststroke doesn't hurt your medley. So the medley was good. Oh yeah. <laughs> and, and, uh, and it just, like I said, then, then it became this thing where, well, Blue Springs just always has a great medley and everybody just wanted to be the breaststroker after Wendy to Trey and, you know, on the medley. Cause that was, you know, that's, that's a first place in state back, you know, and yeah. it's just funny how all those things develop. Uh, we had some bad luck with the boys uh, just because we're a bit, we're a, a bedroom community and we're on that way up. It was those 30 something early 40 parents and they're getting that, and then, uh, that first big promotion. And then all of a sudden they get the next one and there goes your, your four forty two um, sophomore junior 500 guy to Denver. And, and there goes your 21 five, 50 guy to Eastern St. Louis, Edwardsville, or, you know, Tennessee mm -hmm. or Louisiana. I mean, I lost them to all over. I mean, I lost oh, eight or over a span of five years. I think I lost eight state finalists and state champions to other States on the boys side. No. So, we, so, and we keep moving up. We get, we get into that top four, top three and get mm -hmm. within 30, 40 points. And we just, couldn't quite get it. And I think the last one was uh, we knew we had what we needed. And then that summer, uh, another one of my great 500 guys, his dad got like the opportunity of a lifetime, take over the whole state for their company. And it was in Oklahoma. And I just, I remember we were at summer league and he was helping me coach and, and he comes over with his dad. And I just knew the look on Steve's face. I was like, oh, this isn't going to be good. And, told me he was leaving and it was just that was real hard man I just gave him a hug and said hey look you're always a wildcat I just oh, yeah. gotta keep in touch gotta keep in touch but, but yeah. that was hard we lost it by 28 I think that year and Steve would have been worth with relays oh yeah more than that so it, it, but like I said it just it was one of those things we got some kids on the girls side we lost some of the boys but it just we just kept kind of reloading every year and keeping guys going and 
um, it was just a lot of fun once you got it going, just the, the challenge of keeping all the balls in the air and training new parents every year to run meets and um, doing all that kind of stuff. It was really, uh, I really liked that challenge, you know, and kind of filling the gaps in the lineup by going out and getting some former baseball guy or some, some soccer player to dive or just whatever we had to to kind of plug in those last spots. It was, uh, became a really fun challenge.